is the iPhone 13 Pro Max in 2023 just too good to be true? Well, at around $700 USD on the used market, at a first glance, it seems pretty darn tempting. A phone that was top of the line not that long ago for half the price. But are there any hidden catches that you might not know about until you've handed over your hard-earned currency? Let's find out, starting with the design. And by the way, if you want to know how you can win some free AirPods, stick around for today's video sponsor. So in terms of design, we get a beautiful matte glass back, stainless steel sides, and a gigantic OLED display. It's a design that won't break any grounds as of now. It looks pretty much the same as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, 14 Pro Max, and to some extent, even the 11 Pro Max. But even though the looks are getting generic, it's 100% still got that solid feel in the hand. Although for lots of people, it is going to be quite thick and heavy. While yes, the Max model does give you that bigger screen, which I'll talk about in a bit, it is a bit tiring after a while to hold. For the vast majority of people, I'd honestly just recommend going with the regular 13 Pro unless you really want that bigger screen. Now on the bottom, we get the lightning port and speakers. Unfortunately, no USB-C yet, although there is wireless charging on the back. It is pretty set in stone that we'll see USB-C on the iPhone 15 later this year. So it is worth noting that this lightning connector could be on its way to obsolescence in a few years time. Now the speakers beside the port are amazing for what they are, really deep and rich sound, especially with that stereo speaker setup, and they get pretty darn loud too, so it's not what you'd expect from typical smartphone speakers, I really, really like these. Now, as I mentioned before, we get a huge 6.7 inch display on the front, which is especially made bigger by that shrunken down notch. The shrunken notch isn't really noticeable in everyday life, but subconsciously, it does make a huge difference compared to the old larger one, and plus, you also get those super thin bezels. Now, the display itself is absolutely amazing, top of the line. Everything you're viewing is going to look absolutely pixel free and vibrant and it's also really easy to see because of its size. The size actually makes it really good specifically for landscape games but it's also great for just general things like watching videos, reading articles or scrolling TikTok. But the main thing that the 13 Pro Max display brought was the 120Hz refresh rate aka ProMotion. Think of it as your display going from 60 frames per second to 120 frames per second. Because of this everything feels incredibly fluid and buttery compared to its predecessors and this I feel unlike a lot of gimmicky stuff is actually a defining feature worth choosing one phone over the other because 120Hz just makes the entire iPhone experience that much more fluid and pleasant. Now of course it's by no means any essential feature, 60Hz is what we've had for ages but I would highly recommend checking it out in person before you make your decision but regardless of what decision you make it's always a good idea to protect your thousand dollar slab of glass with a high quality highly durable case like the second gen magic stand case from today's video sponsor Case Coop. This second gen magic stand case keeps your phone as slim as possible while providing top-end drop protection. But don't let its slim profile fool you. It's packed with features such as this built-in kickstand, perfect for looking at recipes while flaunting your questionable cooking skills or watching movies while stuck in the middle seat on a long flight. Now in addition, you've also got full lens coverage. It's the ideal case for anyone who wants to protect their device in the most secure way possible without sacrificing the looks of your phone or making it too much of a kerfuffle to hold and carry around. But that's not all the good news. CaseCo now allows US and EU residents to buy now and pay later with Klarna. When you use Klarna, your money will stay in your account, and from then you'll have 14 days to try out the product and see if it fits your needs before paying, with no interest and no fees when you pay on time. What's more is that when you sign up and pay with Klarna, you'll be entered into the draw to win some free AirPods. So go and buy your next phone case from Kaysku with Klarna and have a crack at winning a pretty darn good prize at the link in the description below. So now let's move on to the back of the iPhone 13 Pro Max and take a look at the cameras. It's got quite a few knickknacks and features. However, the iPhone 14 Pro that came out in 2022 brought a huge spec bump with the main camera going from 12 to 48 megapixels. Basically what that means is that you're getting a much higher resolution photo, so you can zoom in a lot more without losing detail in the image. Now I wouldn't say that this is a reason to spend quite a significant bit more for the 14 Pro unless you really care about photo quality, otherwise the 13 Pro still takes incredibly stunning shots. Now in terms of the ultra wide camera, it does diminish a bit of quality compared to the main lens, but that's only noticeable when you zoom in. Overall, it's pretty good quality, and it's very useful for taking wider shots without taking a step back. But the wider shots aren't the ultrawide's only use. It can also take macro shots when you move your phone really close to an object. And the macro quality is really decent. You can zoom in really, really close, and in good lighting, you can get tons of detail and vibrant colors, just like the main lens. Now recently, telephoto lenses on iPhones have stepped up their game by a long shot, and this one is no different. The one on here with 3x zoom does an amazing job at zooming in without losing detail in the image. 
image since you're zooming in optically instead of digitally. Now video can be shot in up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and aside from being absolutely phenomenal in terms of stabilization, colors, and detail, the video on here also boasts quite a few features. For one, it can record video in Apple ProRes. Apple ProRes is an insanely high quality format used for video editors so that they can have more control in post-production. Now of course, most people will never even touch this, especially since one minute of ProRes footage is about 6 gigabytes. The base 128 gig model actually does not have ProRes recording, so it's worth keeping in mind that if you do want to shoot in ProRes, you actually have to get 256 gigs or larger. Now another new feature is cinematic mode, and while it does work, it's nowhere near perfect. It can be a bit iffy around edges, and at this point in time, it's definitely not something to rely upon. Although I do think it's pretty cool how you can actually change the focal point afterwards in the photo app. And again, video and the cameras in general on here are still top of the line. Now in terms of the performance, with the Apple A15 chipset and 6 gigs of RAM, it feels pretty much just as fast as it did on launch day. Apps open straight away, you can run tons of things in the background, and heavy gameplay won't really feel heavy at all. Anything and everything is going to be just so instantaneous. So whether you're a power user or not, you won't be let down by the performance. But then the question arises, how long can I use it without it slowing down or getting laggy? Now the 13 Pro Max gets a pretty good reputation for its battery life, but I can't lie, my phone has really not held up to that since the iOS 16 update, which is not good considering it's only its first update. I went from not caring about whether my phone is charged to running out of charge at about 7pm. Now to be fair, I am a pretty heavy user. I use my hotspot every day for hours and I'm on social media quite a bit, but still, that shouldn't be an issue battery life wise for a flagship phone that's under 2 years old. If you want the best of the best battery life, you unfortunately might have to go for a regular new iPhone 13 or a 14 Pro. And so with everything considered, how well does the 13 Pro Max hold up? And is it the right device for you? Well, as I've said before, it's still pretty much a flagship phone at just 1.5 years old. It's got a super premium design, a buttery 120Hz display, blazing fast performance, and very capable cameras. There's really not too much to complain about, except for, again, the worse than average battery life, and its bulkiness in the hand. But either way, every other aspect about the phone kind of makes up for it. But it's probably not for you if big phones aren't your thing, or you don't really care about having the best of the best, and you wouldn't mind saving a bit of cash in exchange for some bells and whistles. But if you are looking for a great value iPhone, but don't mind dropping some of the latest smaller features, check out this video to see if the iPhone 11 is for you.